Hello everyone, this is Kim Victoria and in today's video I'm going to flip through this journal that I made and I'll show you the basic technique of how it's made and a link to where you can learn more details. So let's get into it. Now I like themes. It's, it's just something that I like to do. So I have all of this red and pink and lovely scrapbook paper and wanted to do something that had the theme of, of love, as you can see. So the closure on this is just a simple little organdy ribbon. And what this is, is an accordion book. And I made rather a grand one. Um, it was, it was really fun to make something that large as an accordion book. So there's a, as you probably know, there's more than, uh, one different, one kind of scrapbook weight paper. And this particular paper is the very heaviest available. Now this, there's two layers here. Um, but the, something this large needs a little more structure. So just using some 20 pound paper, uh, computer paper kind of thing, um, it might not have quite the structural strength to hold together. So I used the heaviest scrapbook paper. So let's get into it. So on this side of this journal, you open up to the first page. And what I'm doing with mine is I'm creating a note from the bookmaker. So I want to give you some ideas of what I was thinking about. And I'll just read that a little bit. This I created this particular journal as a theme of celebration and inspiration for all that love means. Romance, friendliness, compassion, forgiveness, kindness given and received, reminders, appreciation, gratitude, etc. And this includes people, pets, nature, even a beautiful rock, anything that helps you feel wonderful. So there you can see we have little tuck spots. So I just wanted to kind of give you some ideas on what I was thinking about. So it might inspire you in your own journal making. So we have a little flip up here so you could put the your own uh, title, your name, whatever you want in there. We have a belly band here and a little notebook, a little tag notebook. And over on this side, now this is where we start to get into what joins the accordion. So in this one, it's just a nice little tag that I've decorated. And there are these little spots, top and bottom. And these are just stickers I cut out from a bag I, I got when I bought something. And we have some little embellishments here. And what I've done in a number of places is I've used rubber stamps in keeping with the theme. So on this page, and there's kind of a mirror image from the back, from the front to the back. And I had this lovely paper, so I decided I would put some paper in there. There's some more of the same paper, that same rubber stamp. So here's the, the pink, the pink theme. Okay, and then we get kind of into a peachy color, a little bit different rubber stamp. And here's another little mini notebook with some tea dyed paper. So there's that theme, that kind of peachy theme. Then we get back into the pink and the pink theme. And I've inked the edges with, um, it's a dark red. It's called barn red. It's a memories ink. So there's our pink theme again. Get back to the red. We've got the same border. Another version of the same little tag and those stickers. And that's the red, and then we get back here. And what I've done here, of course, there's another one of those little spots, and there is a, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I did. There's a 
a place where you can put something else. So it's another little tuck spot. So what I have back here is when I was making this, I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice for somebody to have like a little kit so that they can uh, make their own embellishments that match, that are in the same family with everything that was created in here. So this, these are just some little uh, leftovers, which you can use as is, or you can put them in where you want. And then we get to the back, but wait, there's more. Get over on this side and it changes. So these are the journal spots and they're hand sewn in and I've used the same rubber stamps. And these pages, particular pages are not dyed. I was using some inks and just a, a little, oh goodness. Um, hmm. I'll have to, I'll have to show you. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is very crude, but what I did is I put some little, you know, cotton ball kind of polyester ball inside. This is a dryer sheet, and I tied it up, and I'll tell you, it <laughs> for a makeshift dauber, it works really well because I can tamp it in the ink and then just kind of scrub it around. So it looks really kind of crude. i got to make a new one. This one's gotten rather messed up. But uh, that's what I was using. I just made my own little dauber. So we've got a doily and that is glued in. That's on this particular flap. We've got a nice little journal. And in the pink section, what I did was I had this dyed paper. So I decided I would tear this just to make it a little bit different and got fun texture. And there's the, the pink theme that's around on this side of the rose. I used on this side. Here's another rubber stamp. That's some of that same just smudged paper. Another one of those types. And we get to the back and there is another doily with another little journal. And there you have it. So Let's show you how the basic structure of this is made. And you can see that this is very, very heavy. There's uh, two, two pieces of scrapbook paper here. Yeah. And what holds the whole thing together are these triangular flaps. Now there's a couple of options with these and I've set up to show you what those are. You're starting to see a little bit of what's going on there. So what I do is I'll take, when I'm just learning how to make something, I'll get out something to practice with. And what we need for these is a square. And I already know that this is eight inches wide and it doesn't, for this practice, it doesn't need to be perfect. And there's a little something extra going on here that I'll show you. So I'm just looking to find the center. We won't be doing that when we do the final one. And we have a little point there. Okay, so we have a little point there. So what you have is you have a square sheet of paper and you want to find the point, and I'll show you that technique in a moment for your final work. And what we want to do is bring all those points to the center. And I'm being very casual right now because this is just a test piece of paper. And one of the reasons you want to do this is because if you're using patterned paper, one side is patterned or both sides are patterned, you want to know where your pattern is going to show up. So after you've put all four corners into the center, you want to fold it in half one way. And there you have, you can kind of see what's happening here. Here are, here's your little flap pockets. And there's those two flaps. So you can see where it's going. Okay, and let's get to some real paper. All right. 
So this is some scrapbook paper. I have cut to eight inches by eight inches. This one that I've shown you was the full sheet, 12 inches by 12 inches. So your final size comes out to about almost eight and three quarters by four and a half. Okay, so it that's one of the reasons you might want to experiment with some scrap paper in different sizes to find out what size you're interested in. Now, one of the things I'm interested in with going with the eight inch by eight inch square paper is it holds an ATC perfectly. An artist trading card, in case you don't know. So there's there was my thought on that. So that's, I wanna make one of these. Now you don't wanna be folding this in the wrong directions because it'll start to affect the structure. So you want to match up corner to corner and just make a very light pencil mark somewhere in the middle. And then you make one the other diagonal direction. And that gives you a little point. I don't know, can you kind of see that little X marks the spot, okay? And now on this one, I wanna be very careful. I wanna make sure that my point is going exactly in the middle. And then they kind of line up with each other. You can see it happening. Yeah, and I don't care how, how hard I try, I often get one that just doesn't quite line up. And I don't know whether it's because I cut it a little bit wonky or not. But once it's all assembled, I have found it doesn't it doesn't matter too much. If it's just a little bit off, I would prefer if it was really perfect. But so after you've got all four points going in the middle, I usually just take a uh, white gum eraser and get those marks off. And then you very carefully fold it, fold it in half. And now you have one of those sections. And you've got your little pocket, and that's all together. All right, so I have made a bunch of these. So now I'm going to organize these into the kind the, the order I want to have them. I'm going to organize these into the order I want to have them. And I'll be right back. So here they are. I've organized them in the order that I'd like to have them. And they can start this way, or it can start this way. It really doesn't matter, it's an accordion. Okay, so let's look at these. And my next decision is do I want to glue these together completely? And that's what I did in the sample that I showed you, the love, the love journal. But if I don't, I can have another little pocket. And this time, I think that's what I would like to do, is create another little pocket. So I'm gonna put out something for me. Oh, here we go. I wanna put out something to catch any little extra glue. And this is um, called Fabric Tac Glue. This is a... Um, acetone-based glue, not a water-based glue. And what's really good about this is that not only does it um, glue fabrics and all kinds of things, but it's great for paper and it doesn't make the paper wrinkle. And when you're working with paper, the any of your glues that are water-based, they're going to make that paper wrinkle and you don't want that. So what I want to do to leave that pocket on the top as I just want to put a bead of glue on this edge and 
this edge. And very carefully, let's put those two together. I want to make sure that they're lined up perfectly. And this glue does give you some time to move things and make sure everything is put in place. And the other thing is it dries really fast. So there we go. There's there's our there's our little pocket. So we got to let that dry. And then we can just keep going with this. So I'll be right back while I glue this side and this side, always the bottom edge so that I have a pocket on the top. Oh, and two things, you want to uh, make sure that there's no ooze of the glue coming out. If there is, you'll want to, uh, you'll want to wipe it off with a rag. I don't have any oozing out there, but I do have ooze coming out of the bottle, so I won't get a very good, I won't get a very good glue line if I leave that going. So just keep wiping off your glue tip if you need to. So what I've also been doing is just making sure that everything, as I was doing those different layers, making sure that all these edges line up, these edges line up, as well as making sure that the glue is not gluing the wrong pages together. Now the other thing that I could have done, instead of gluing this edge and this edge together, forming that... So forming a little pocket, okay? So instead of this being the pocket, I could have glued those two edges together and the pocket could be coming in from the back. So this could, this could have been a little bit open to create a pocket. In other words, going in this way. So you have some options. Glue the whole thing closed, put a pocket in here, put a pocket on this side, lots of lots of fun options so now this is all the insides and on the back side we just have these empty spaces now there's great ways we can use these there's no extra things in here now we could paste in some paper and make some journaling spots we could put pockets in here that could hold more things, tags, ATCs, ephemera, whatever you want. So there's a lot of different ways you could use this size, this side. Um, and what I did, of course, in this one was I turned this side into the journaling pages and sewed, hand-stitched them in with the three three-hole pamphlet stitch. And in the middle, what I did was I made sure that that was right in the middle. You can see in the spine, it comes out where those two points come together. And then equally spaced the others. So that was that. So the one extra thing you need here is a cover because there's this, this one has a flap, but the flap that was this one that you're seeing like right, um, oops, get it the right way. So the flap that you see here, you can't see it here because it's inside two other pieces of card uh, cardstock. Well, it feels like cardstock. It's the heavyweight uh, scrapbook paper. 
So it's enclosed inside two sheets of scrapbook paper. Okay, so this is the basic structure. And this is going to be ideal for ATCs. And I'll do another video where I walk through finishing this one off, I think. Uh, right now, I wanted to I wanted to introduce, right now what I wanted to do was introduce this journal, and it's available on my Etsy shop as of today's video, and show you the basic structure. And there's a link down below in the description for the video I watched that showed me how to do this. And then that's what I did, I ran with it. So I've got eight pieces of paper here. And in this one, it was one, two, three, four, five full size 12 by 12 sheets, plus cutting the shapes so that I have these heavyweight covers. So this is a very, very hefty, sturdy book. This is not going anywhere. So there you have it for today. And I hope that was fun and, <laughs> and inspires you to try this also because you could use any kind of paper and make your little pockets and have some fun with this. And we'll go on with this in another video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.